All right, everyone, thank you back. Thank you and welcome back to Food Farms and Chefs. And I would love and have the honor to introduce you to Olga Sorzano, who is the owner and operator of Baba's Kombucha. Baba's Bucha. You got it. Yep. And um, so when, like, you... Family, I have to say, is one of the biggest things that I've noticed is throughout um, your entire uh, website, like while I was researching, it feels like family is like a very strong tie. So let our listeners know, how did you get started? Well, family definitely means a lot to me. So Baba was my uh, great grandmother and Baba was the one who raised me because um, you know, my mom was pretty young when she had me and my grandma was still working. So I fell in love with my great grandmother. So she was the one who raised me until I was six years old. And she taught me one of the most important things because, you know, like you learn throughout your life, but one of those major things you learn before you're six, you know, you learn how to use the potty and how to walk and how to talk and um, how to make kombucha. So Baba was the one who, um, you know, always had this jar of uh, kombucha with, uh, you know, sitting on the top of the fridge. And, you know, I would come and I would say, Baba, my belly hurts. And she would say, have some kombucha. And I would say, my leg hurts. And she would say, have some kombucha. So with this <laughs> magic um, potion. And also, you know, I grew up during communist time and communist Russia, so we didn't really have all this Fanta's and Pepsi's to begin with. So it was just a really fun thing that I learned to drink. Um, you know, I never knew that it was low sugar. I never knew it was probiotics and enzymes. You know, when you kid, you don't really give a, um, you don't give a many thoughts about this kind of thing. Um, I just enjoyed it. And it stuck with me, you know, I really you know, enjoy it throughout my whole life. And when I came to United States and I found kombucha in the store, I was just blown away. Um, and then I tasted it and I was like, hmm, you know, it's not exactly what I remember. And uh, when you cannot find what you want, you just make it yourself. And that's, that's what happened to, to me. I just started my own kombucha company and I call it Baba's Brew because Baba was the inspiration. And the uh, little squirrel logo was also kind of dedication to her because she was the teeny tiny German lady with bright red hair. And her nickname was given by her dad was my little red squirrel. So I never met her little red squirrel. She was a little gray squirrel. Um, <laughs> but my mom would say, you know, we're going to squirrel's house for dinner. And so I was raised by a squirrel, like Mowgli. <laughs> That's a very cute story. And like, and I was going to touch base on that too, because, you know, that's interesting, like that, you know, she had that nickname and that it was Red Scroll because of her red hair. So I would, I'm just like imagining this adorable young girl that has like flaming red hair that has like a ton of energy. And then she's creating, you know, this kombucha that from scratch and in, unfortunately in an area that was being riddled with you know not the the best time but like to to still go forth and you know enjoy life and have such a zest and a zeal for life where you're creating something that's you know positive and and whatnot that's that's meaningful she was i mean she was not as you would imagine her she wasn't that young girl but she was i mean she was a firecracker man she you know, she went through two wars, for revolution. She raised uh, six kids, five of her stepkids. Um, she was like, she was absolutely, you know, she was very, very inspirational. And so anytime, you know, when I remember her, you know, she was my playmate, you know, for 80 years playmate. She never really lost her spark. Maybe it's that kombucha, you know, you know. <laughs> It's, I mean, it is very healthy, like, and as you said, like, it's low in sugar, and it's got a lot of enzymes, probiotics, and, you know, things that people go out into the stores, and they, they buy individual, like, containers that are, like, a probiotic bottle, or, you know, you know, here's some enzymes, but kombucha has all of that. 
Well, I always tell people, I'm like, listen, if you are going to the mission to Mars, the moon, or if you are really recovering some kind of really, you know, low on, you know, chronic disease, then yes, sure, you can buy the pills of probiotics. But for most of us, you know, getting probiotics from its natural food source, such as yogurt and kimchi and kraut and natta and, uh, um, you know, all other stuff and kombucha, of course, you know, this is what our body recognizes as a food. So it's digest much, much easier. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, you know, I personally think that, you know, getting it from the natural sources, it's really much better because, you know, it's from the food. This is what our body recognizes. Yeah. And, you know, things that are are fermented, like the kimchi, like you had mentioned, um, I love kimchi and in other fermented foods, like, and it's a taste, it's a, it's something that like not all palates like, but I love it because it's got, you know, you have the sweet and then, you know, the potent, like hot cam- um, kimchi, but like kombucha, you know, is kind of like a, for- for- it has that same concept because it's through fer- fermentation. So, you know, like it has all of those good enzymes that creates the healthy gut, we'll say. (laughs) Well, exactly. And then, you know, it's funny because when I tell people about fermented foods and they're like, well, I cannot really sit down and eat a gallon of kimchi. Well, nobody asks you to do that, you know. (laughs) know, Introduce those fermented foods. They could be just like condiments. They could be little additions, you know, like for instance, in the morning, I have a glass of kombucha, you know, two fried eggs and kimchi. So I already introduced, you know, two fermented foods early in the morning. So, you know, you don't have to have gallons of it. And the same thing with kombucha, you know, uh, the the most frequently asked question is how much should I drink? So my question back to you, well, how much did you used to drink? Did you, is it your first time? So it's like a workout, you know, I have a funny story. You know, I am, you know, I'm active person, but I don't do running. I don't run. Um, so I have a, this adorable 12 year old daughter and she comes in and she said, mommy, I'm going to run 5k. And I'm like, that's high five girl. I mean, that's amazing. You just do it. And she goes, no, 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 no. I want you to do it to this. And I said, sweetie, mommy doesn't run. Mommy doesn't run 5k's. And she, you know, the child wants you to do something. So I said, okay. So, um, we did this, we ran 5k, she came second and I did not die. So <laughs> I couldn't walk for like three days because, you know, if you don't run, you know, it would be probably really useful for me to walk around the house, you know, to maybe jog. But <laughs> it wasn't really a good idea. So the same thing with kombucha, you know, oily fermented food, if you don't have much experience drinking the gallon, probably would cause you a little gas and a little discomfort because it's not like your body doesn't like it. It's because it's just too much. Yeah. So, if you never drank kombucha, or if you're not into fermented foods yet, but you want to make your body healthy, you just should start, you know, four ounces, you know, start with three ounces, but do it every day and then build your body. And you will notice, I can guarantee you will notice dramatic difference. You know, anytime I travel and if I cannot find kombucha or any other fermented foods, like I feel it, like I feel kind of like, you know, I just feel discomfort. I feel a little cool. So you know, your microbiome, healthy microbiome, you, you know, you can exercise, you can do all this stuff, but if your microbiome is not healthy, you just have very expensive bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, that made me laugh because I, I, I had uh, gone a little bit too haywire one of the times that I ate kimchi and I uh, regretted it about an hour later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I- <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't stop me because I love kimchi. So, you know, but that was kind of like one of my first experiences of kimchi. And then I was like, oh, we have to take this in tears. <laughs> right. It's not like it's kimchi. Don't stop eating it. Just don't do like oh, you're all too much. Yeah. So, and, and likewise with your kombucha to do the same thing. Yeah. Don't run 5K if you don't run. Don't do it. <laughs> So um, for our listeners out there that don't know what kombucha is, can you go through the steps and describe kind of what, without giving away any trade secrets, um, what it is? I teach kombucha classes all the time. So my mom goes, 
well, you don't give them all secrets, right? And I'm like, no, mom, I'm giving them all secrets because when they know how to make it, they will appreciate my craft more. Um, you know, I take a lot of cheese classes. It doesn't really mean I make cheese. I just appreciate it more. Um, so that being said, so kombucha is a sparkling probiotic, tonic, made with fermented tea. So the awesome thing about it is you don't really have to have um, any, you know, a wildly special equipment to do this. So what we do, we start with a sweet tea. So we brew just a tea and we use fair trade organic blend of green and black tea. So we just infuse it like you would make in your regular cup of tea, just much, much bigger, kind of like a thousand gallon cup of tea. Um, and then you add sugar and you make it dissolve and then you cool it down. And then you add the culture, which which called SCOBY, not SCOBY, SCOBY. Uh, and it's abbreviation for symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Sounds fancy, but it's just literally bacteria and yeast that like each other and get alone. Wow, that's a concept. Um, so during the fermentation, the bacteria uh, consume the sugar and produce alcohol. And then yeast consume the alcohol and, and break it down to beneficial acids. Lactic acid, acetic acid, glucuronic acid, and also infuses the mixture with probiotics and enzymes. Um, and it also produces CO2. So your end result is beautifully sparkling effervescent beverage, which is very, very low in sugar. Uh, our average kombucha is about 45 grams per 12 ounce, um, and which is absolutely filled with enzymes and probiotics. Um, so that's it. And then during secondary fermentation, we do flavor our kombucha. And the big difference between Baba's Brew and other brands, we do not use no juices, no extract, no puree, just fresh organic ingredients. And therefore, you also get additional benefits from those ingredients. Like, for instance, one of our most popular flavors is Purple Rain. And we are, we use fresh, um, we use blueberries from Hamilton, New Jersey. So they're all organic blueberries, fresh organic ginger. So you get probiotics and enzymes from kombucha, and then you get all this um, antioxidants, vitamin A, vitamin B uh, from the blueberries. And then you also get really wonderful antiviral uh, benefits from ginger. And it's also good for your digestion. Ta-da! <laughs> which is, yeah, which is awesome. Now you, you also, what are some of the flavors that you offer? Um, so we have a five year round flavors. Um, so we have, um, as I said, purple rain, blueberries and ginger. Then we have Ruby Sipper. This one is 100% uh, hibiscus. This is kind of funny because we were looking for the, for the name and I came up with the name a Ruby Slipper, but I couldn't decide if it's a plural or singular. So we, we go between slipper and slippers. And then my friend said, it should be a sipper. So, but most people still call it Ruby Slipper. Um, so Ruby Slipper is 100% hibiscus. Then we have Bees Knees, which is a local raw honey from Swarm Boston in Chester County and chamomile. Then we have a flower power, one of my personal favorites. This is my inspiration, rosé wine. This one has lavender, rose petals, tulsi basil. Um, you can pour an fancy wine glass as satisfying glass of rosé minus 10 over next day. Uh, and we also have believe. So this is our green kombucha. And we brewed it when we found out Eagles were going to Super Bowl four years ago. So everybody made still a green thing and we made still a green thing. Uh, we call it Fly Eagles Fly. Uh, Eagles flew. Uh, but people came back and they said, listen, we just love the flavor. So we name it Believe. So we believe in. So you guys should keep drinking Believes because we need to help Eagles. Um, and then we also have a uh, seasonal flavor that we change every three months. So right now is the winter and our seasonal flavor is Firebird. And this one is made with uh, organic strawberries, cinnamon, and cayenne. So it gives you this little nice heat. Ooh, nice heat kick. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was like, ooh, strawberries and a little bit of heat. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> and it makes fantastic margarita. And if you in dry January, you can pour it in your fancy margarita glass um, and also put make some, you know, cayenne sugar rim. 
it's as satisfying because you get all this complexity from fermentation. So if you are looking for a satisfying dry January zero proof cocktail, kombucha is ready cocktail in the bottle. You have nothing else except fancy glass and maybe some kind of fun garnish. Which is nice. I cannot believe how much, you know, goes into like the enjoyment of kombucha and, um, you know, everything's going so quickly where our time is flying. So I wanted to mention, too, that you your your Bubba's um, Bucha is so popular that you grew exponentially since you opened like you opened in a small like, um, you know, kitchen. And then um, like a year later, you already had to expand to such a larger, you know, venue where you're, I see venue, but uh, a, a larger commercial kitchen to like accommodate the growth that you've been finding. And then you, you mentioned this earlier, you teach classes on how to make kombucha and whatnot, but you also, I think if I recall, you know, you also teach or offer yoga and stuff like that. So it's like health and wellness in, in addition to like learning how to, uh, how to make kombucha. So be before we have to let you go, I wanted to plug that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for saying this because, you know, um, and I think any small business owner can relate, you know, we're like ostriches. We just put our faces in the, in the sand. And it's like, when you say this, I'm like, oh yeah, we did this. <laughs> You know, because you tend to concentrate on kind of daily grinds and you don't really see big pictures. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, no problem. So, I mean, okay. So how often do you offer these classes? Because I'm I'm sure that there's definitely listeners who are going, I want to be healthier. You know, we started this new health regimen. It's like, you know, January. This how do How do they find these classes and where can they find your kombucha? Absolutely. So uh, we unfortunately stopped doing yoga during COVID uh, because, you know, we just wanted to protect our employees and, you know, just kind of like limit um, any kind of exposure. And then after this happened, we also had like, we expanded. So we expanded um, into our yoga room. <laughs> so now it, it used to be yoga and now you can find, you know, all our dry good storage. So unfortunately, this not happening. However, I still love to do fermentation classes, you know, kombucha in particular. Uh, I am going to be posting something about the class. I think I will do it on the first week of uh, February. So if you just follow us on our social media, it's Baba's, uh, it's Baba's Bucho on Instagram and Baba's Brew uh, on Facebook. So I always post classes about uh, all, all, everything I post about on my social media. I'm slightly addicted to social media, but, um, and, uh, where you can find us. So you can find us in all mid Atlantic region of Whole Foods. Um, so anywhere from Richmond to, to Princeton. Uh, and then, uh, you can find us in Mom's Organic Market. Uh, we also offer our kombucha on tap and all their naked lunch uh, cafe so that's really cool uh you can find us in wegmans uh in the state of pennsylvania uh you can also find us in um giant heirloom they also have our kombucha both on tap and in bottles river wards weaver's way co-op de bruna's brothers um and a bunch of other oh kimberton hall is my favorite store uh martindale's um so there's a bunch of stores. So if you kind of look in and you cannot find anything near you, just shoot me email Olga at Baba's Brew and I can, you know, find the store near you that carries our kombucha. We also just unveiled, un unveiled new uh, line of kombucha vinegars. Um, this one has a little different name. It's called Baba's Acid Tree. Uh, and uh, I know. Uh, so it's a four gorgeous flavors. It's really fantastic as a sustainable cocktail acidifier, finishing on your salad, on your sandwiches. Um, so check us out. We also just started to be carried at River Wards and uh, Kimberton Whole Foods. You can order it also online. And we have an all entire separate Baba's Acid Trip uh, Instagram page. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And um yeah, I usually That's start. Like, <laughs> get so excited. No, no, that was perfect because I was going to round you up, but you did it on your own. And so thank you so much for joining us, Olga. 
Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And everything you do just to, you know, cover small business owners like myself, it's really, really huge. I mean, we can take any help we we are offered. So thank you so much. And that's such a pleasure being on your podcast, Samarit. Oh, no problem. And thank you uh, for everybody who's listening. And we will be right back after this short break. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Food Farms and Chefs. And I have the esteemed honor of introducing Robert Ashford, who is the owner of several different uh, businesses. But right now, I'm bringing him on to discuss Volsted by Unity. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Um, And so you have a very unique restaurant. And you've ha- you have another restaurant too, which is a taqueria. But um, but and we will we'll put a pin in that, and we'll discuss that later. But your Volstead restaurant, which is in located in Maniunk, which is like such a great area because it's trendy, it's you know hip, it has a lot of energy, and you are Philadelphia's first zero proof bar and you know and not only that you also offer plant-based meals like your entire menu is vegan so we have a lot of listeners that will reach out and say you know oh but what about the healthy stuff like we we you know we're health health wise or health driven and we'd love to hear some health you know healthy restaurants and healthy places to eat you are a perfect guest for our listeners that's right. We, we cover it on both sides for, for those that want to cut back or just don't drink or want a nice plant-based diet uh, or just cutting back on their you know animal product intake. We, we cover both sides. Yeah, it's been a, yeah, I love all of the stuff that we do under Unity, but the Volstead is, is certainly near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Now, so, I mean, you say that, but it really is like something that hits home for both you and your wife um, because you, you know, you built this um by unity bolstered by unity but together and the unity projects i don't want to say that but um <laughs> the unity um entrepreneur businesses there we go uh you you built it together because it hits home um both of you have are are you know dr- you know live a rec- recovery life if i if i recall yeah, it's it's absolutely right. So we, you know, the way we identify is, is people in recovery, you know, which for me means that I no longer use um, intoxicating substances. I'm also in recovery from a uh, mental health concern. Um, and Ariel's coming up on nearly a decade and a half of her own personal recovery. So it's, you know, I think for a lot of people out there, it probably just feels good. Like, yeah, of course we should support people. Everybody deserves a place to go, options and choices. But for us, it's that is true, but it's much more so also that we're building different projects and different businesses in the community that also give back to the community that we belong to, right? Like we certainly are part of Maniunk. We live in Roxborough where our house is, but we're also able to give back to our lived experience community in this case, which is those in recovery or and also in my case, returning from incarceration. And it's it's critical to the DNA of, of all the Unity brands and, and Volstead just takes that to the next level of really integrating it across food choices, across beverage choices and experiential and and employment opportunities. Yeah. Now uh, you, I'm bringing you on for dry January and that is, you know, the absolute perfect (laughs) platform for you to discuss your, your Volstead. So what are some of the, the options? Because I know a lot of people hear that and I've had friends that are like, so it's juice. And I'm like, no, it's not juice. (laughs) You know, these are wines that are, are created from wineries and, you know, whiskeys and bourbons that are zero proof that, you know, the, the companies make and you're, you know, purchasing them obviously and putting them on your shelves. And I, what I found interesting is that in order to drink at the bar, you have to still be 21 and older. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's such a place to start, right? And we, we hear this, this kind of commentary, uh, both from the internet trolls every time we have like a, an inquire magazine article posted, like, so I'm going to pay $11 for juice. Uh, and that's certainly one way to look at it, but it would be the wrong way. Like you said, right. And I, I think for your, for your listeners out there, this, this growing trend of zero proof options, right. Historically over the last decade, everybody's kind of seen a a mocktail menu, right. Which a mocktail is, is traditionally, a lot of fresh juices, herbs, ingredients, and they're they're making drinks or beverages that are, are mock 
cocktails. Um, but the zero proof cocktails are an entirely different category and they're exactly what you described, right? And I, I think it's an important education because many people, their entire frame of reference is either mocktails or maybe it's O'Doul's, which is like the OG non-alcoholic beer that is certainly our predecessor, but nobody should should drink anymore because it's it's not very good. But that being said, it's zero proof. All the products are made the same exact way as you might expect a traditional spirit, a traditional beer, or a traditional wine to be made. The only difference being after you get all those great flavors, whether you're starting with a mash, fermented grapes, et cetera, is they're taking and using a cold filtration process to remove out all of the alcohol except for small trace amounts on non-alcoholic products. Or in the case of zero proof products, which are there's no proof, not even trace amounts, they never had alcohol in it to begin with, but it's still made in the same exact way, but skipping the fermentation steps. So whether you're looking at spirits, so these would be like you mentioned, bourbons, whiskeys, wines, gins, tequilas, aperitif, digestif, we haven't even have a zero proof absinthe. These are all the traditional spirits that you may know, perhaps you even love. They just don't have no alcohol in them. And it's the same in the beer category. So you've got great craft breweries and microbreweries now making just phenomenal non-alcoholic beer products that taste exactly like the real thing, except you don't get a hangover afterwards. And, and the nice thing about them too, is they also have significantly less calories as we're talking about the health kick, which just fits right in with kind of what we're crafting. And the wine is the same way, right? It's it's not grape juice. These aren't sparkling uh, ciders that you you may have grown up with or seen if you don't drink around New Year's, except these are great Sangioveses and Pinot Noirs, Sauvignon Blancs. These are, are not, you know, your, your kid's grape juice boxes. These are delicately and highly nuanced cocktails, drinks, and wines that that would blow you away what's out there, right? I think anybody that hasn't had a non-alcoholic or zero-proof option, or if all you know is mocktails and have never experienced this, your world is about to change. I know. And one of the things that kind of blew my mind a little bit is you also have a champagne. Like, I don't know why, like, because I'm like, I, I was a little bit like, oh, wow, there's whiskeys and there's bourbons. That's why I mentioned them, because I'm a big Browns girl. Um, so you like, I was very impressed with that, but like you had all of your added, like to, to create the cocktails, you have mm -hmm. all of your, you know, as you said, the, the liqueurs, the aperitifs and like everything is just zero proof. Um, and then the one thing that blew my mind is the little factoid of it has the same amount of like your trace amounts have the same amount of uh, ABV as a banana. <laughs> and I'm like, that's boggles my mind because I'm like, well, if you're worried about that, like it, you're, you don't need to be eat a banana. Do you get yeah. drunk off of that? No. <laughs> You'd have to eat a lot of bananas and they'd probably have to be sitting on your counter for a while. But I, I do think that's the misconception, right? And, and certainly that for anybody that may be in recovery, like me, if your chosen recovery pathway is, is abstinence, like it's it's worth a personal introspection and conversation with your medical provider, sponsor, if that's if that's the program of recovery you work, because trace amounts of alcohol may matter, right? But at the end of the day, if we're just talking straight science, uh, which I love. That's right. I mean, it's you're ingesting more alcohol by volume in your everyday diet than you ever will, unless you drink like a hundred NA beers, right? You'd have to, they, and you would explode uh, and from bloat before you would uh, in terms of getting a any type of ABV that's high enough. And I think most people just don't have that frame of reference. Like, oh, this this banana I'm eating, like you said, is has more content, and it's true, right? And I think that's the type of education we're doing to the consumer segment now. Is there's lots of choices out there, and it may be healthier than you think. Yeah. And, and I want to say, because there's, you know, there's obviously, as you said, trolls, um, out there who are hearing this, like, or might hear this. I'm not saying that you are, if you're listening, I'm just saying that there are people who troll and, you know, it's, it's not just you, it's like so much more. And not only is it so much more, it's absolutely fabulous in that you are packed to the brim <laughs> for your seating. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, right? And I get everybody's you know conversation. They're used to you know, uh, well, mid shelf, top shelf liquors that 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 may are spirits that have you know a certain price associated with them. But if you know if you're listening and you heard you know a couple minutes ago, these things are made the same exact way. These distributors are investing hundreds of millions of dollars in factories, etc. This stuff is is not just juice, right? It's not like fresh pressing orange juice at home. Like these are highly crafted and scientifically. Um, uh, distilled products, right? And they cost just about the same thing. Uh, they just don't have the taxes that the PCLB may be putting on stuff or 
Um, but it's it's not just juices, right? And I think it's not just that the products are that good, but it's also think of the talent of our craft cocktail and mixologist, the amount of care that's going in to source these products and create great testing recipes. Um, and I think the other side of that, which we this always tends to have the most impact uh, for the quote unquote trolls out there, is that $11, you also got to think of our DNA as a business that we pay our staff living wages, right? Every, and we're at a full service hospitality setting. Every staff in the front of house makes at least $15 an hour, if not more. Um, labor costs money, right? And I think, and we're still able to keep prices down and currently in the economic conditions matter. So it's not around paying $11 for juice. You're paying $11 to have a great experience, social yeah. environment, great tasting products um, that you've never had anywhere else. And it, it, and it's not juice. But let's just, it, you know, return. I mean, not- <laughs> it, exactly. And and then on top of that, let's talk about the fact that you have a, a fantastic menu that your chef, your executive chef, Fred- Frederick, sorry, Morris, it, you know, created and cultivated for you utilizing um vegan products obviously but also like you know you substitute things like um the mushrooms the king oyster mushrooms in replace for like bacon or whatnot and what i thought was really interesting i was a veg okay so i was a vegetarian for 10 years and i was started being a vegetarian when they didn't have products out there and the products that were were not very good but you have a full filet mignon that is a vegan filet mignon and it kind of boggles my mind and like the old vegetarian in me wants to go there and just try it out because I do eat meat now fair warning full disclosure I eat meat and I love meat but I would be so interested in trying that filet mignon and it, it is delicious and I think it's important right when when chef and I set out, you know, we, Ariel and I had been visioning this for a while and we're waiting for the product categories to catch up. But when you know, I met with Chef last year, uh, we started pitching this idea of, of what we were going for. And we're both non-classically trained chefs. Um, you know, we're both Southern inspired. We learned to, to cook in our grandma's and, and parents' kitchens. Um, but we wanted to set out to be like vegan food, meat, omnivores, like whatever you may be. Like we just wanted to set out to create great food, right? And we wanted it to be plant-based with a focus on the environment and world sustainability and health. But at the end of the day, it's it's less around like, oh, we've got to make stuff with plants. And the amount of people that come in, we certainly have a, a huge cadre of you know plant-based diets. They're straight vegans. They love it for that. But the amount of omnivores and, and people that kind of switch back and forth or maybe vegetarian, but not full vegan are coming in and enjoying the experience just as well. And it's it's because of those reasons you just described, right? It, people are interested in trying something and then they eat it and it's like, this is just good food, right? I don't care if it's made out of plants or if it's made out of animal products. Certainly there is some, but it's our goal in setting out is how do we just create great Southern inspired meals that happen to be cooked by plants because we think it's the right thing to do. And the filet, I will say, if, you, if you've never had a chance, it's from a company called Juicy Marbles um, out of the European Union. And it is just phenomenal. It eats more like short rib than a traditional filet, but it is just so good. Um, and we use it in a variety of different applications from the filet au champions um, to we're going to be doing a, a braised red, zero proof red wine short rib with it in the spring menu. We're going to do a vegan mayo and Dijon mustard encrusted filet in the spring menu too. So like, there's just, and our sliders are delicious. You'd be surprised at what you can do with plants. But I think if you're on the fence out there and maybe you're just like, oh, I need to cut back. My doctor told me I'm not really a vegan. That's okay, right? Like we're just, we're trying to expand people's horizons and give them choice that happen to make a positive impact on the world. Yeah, because one of the one of the things that people don't understand is that um, to, to be more green, you you do need to actually cut down on the meat because the meat production process is is very harmful to our environment. So you're also offering that up too, but um, I'm you touched base on this a little bit, and you know I want to circle back to it, which is how you give back to the community. Like obviously, you know you you give back, you hire um, people who are in recovery, you hire people who are you know coming back from being in, um, incarcerated. Sorry, I'm my throat's dry. (laughs) Um, you know, but you also are, you know, creating like, like a multifaceted, um, way of giving back to the community because you have the unity recovery, um, business that that was your first baby that you opened and, you know, which is for a community. And then you also have the unity yoga, which I think you have two studios. 
We do, yeah. One in Germantown on uh, Germantown Ave. It's really in Chestnut Hill, I, I guess, technically. And then the original one in Maniunk. And then Unity Taqueria and Unity Java. Which is forthcoming uh, <laughs> after all the delays and uh, everything else that goes with new construction and new businesses. It will finally, uh, fingers crossed, be open in March. But yeah, I, I think you know, if you're not familiar with with Ariel and I's work under the Unity Brands, um, we have set out over the last five years to to re envision what community could look like, right? And it's this idea, like, and I we're steadfast supporters. You know, thanks to all the federal dollars that come through in different grants and funding mechanisms to give people treatment. Like, that's great. Local and state support, all great, right? But at the end of the day, communities know best what communities need to support themselves, right? Nobody's coming to save us. Um, and we say, and I realize I say that from a relative place of privilege as a you know cisgender white male and that somebody that had access to treatment in my own recovery. But we we found really quickly that we could build things for our community that could sustain our own community and make a positive impact. And we set out to do that starting in, in 2019. And it did start with the Recovery Community Center, which is Unity Recovery. It's in uh, on Gay Street in Maniunk. It's 4,000 square feet of beautiful community center where people can just come in, figure out what they might need to support their lives and thriving and get it all for free. Um, and then Unity Yoga, which you mentioned, that Ariel runs on the day-to-day which is a recovery yoga studio, right? It's um, traditional vinyasa classes, free community recovery yoga. And the idea is, is really to enmesh uh, different parts of the community, right? I think in, you know stigma and discrimination is, is very real, especially with people that may actively use drugs or have mental health concerns or be previously incarcerated. But what happens when it's hard to hate up close, right? So if you're taking a yoga studio or involved in a community and you may not identify that way or, or think you know anybody, and you're taking yoga, you're three feet away from taking somebody that's taking a yoga class on their mat and you get to talking. And then you find out about their lived experiences, which is really, we want to rehumanize people with a whole range of different identities. Um, and th- that idea of what I just said, right, that it's hard to hate up close. It's really easy to, to express forms of xenophobia when it's in the abstract. It's much harder to hate when you actually get to know somebody and integrate and, and have them as part of your lives. And the yoga studio has done a phenomenal job at, at doing that. And then the other range of, of hospitality businesses, which is new, right? Takiera, um, Bolstead, and then Unity Java. The idea is that hospitality industry is one of the easiest that has transferable skills from others. It's easy to break into, especially if you haven't had a whole lot of formal vocational training. Um, there's also a high prevalence of substance use and mental health concerns in the traditional hospitality industry. I say that before I got <laughs> into recovery. That's what I did. Um, and we wanted to give back to people, right? And, and the nice thing about giving back to the community is, is twofold. One, with all of these different supports, employment, uh, yoga, meditation, peer counseling, all of it can be brought to bear for anybody in our community and for those in the community that may not work for us, while also changing conversations and narratives around, you know, in this part of Philadelphia, people know who we are. They're willing to think about and see and interact with people in recovery and returning from incarceration or their allies. And these are conversations that people were having often, sometimes behind closed doors, but we're bringing that out in the open, right? We're that idea of rehumanization is happening on a daily basis. And then you just have that extra perk is that, you know, we employ over 150 people now, we pay them living wages and their lived experience is an asset, not a hindrance or a barrier to success and thriving. Um, and I, I continue to hope that more businesses and others out there will, will start to think of investment in community in such a ways that, you know, recovery and reentry can be really good for business and really good for community. Exactly. Now for our listeners, time flies when you're having fun. For our listeners out there, where can they find Unity, uh, sorry, Volstead by Unity and uh, Unity Takriya, the yoga, the Unity Yoga and <laughs> and uh, Unity Java when it opens? Yeah. So the nice thing is, so all of our Unity concepts are in the Maniunk Rock Store area of Philly. So 19128, 19127 generally. Um, and the beautiful thing about us living in 2023 is I don't have to give you all five websites. You can find any of them. I would encourage you, you know, to go to Instagram, which they're all linked and you can see all the different unity concepts, but the easiest one is Volstead at Volstead zero proof. And then you can go to any of the others. If you are a website person, I won't, I won't, uh, <laughs> that should do much, but the easiest one is unity recovery.org, but everything's interconnected and you can get, involved in our community in different ways, whether that's volunteering, just coming to spend your hard earned dollars on a great experience. Uh, and because it is dry January, if you're out there, there is uh, dry January specials and sales at the bottle shop at Volstead as, as well as at the bar if you wanna have a great night out all month long. And it's a great way to just explore your relationship with alcohol. 
All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Robert. And I look forward to trying out your Unity Java too when that opens. But for the time being, we will check you out in Maniunk. And for our listeners out there, thank you for joining us on Food Farms and Chefs. And we will see you next week.